Hello, this is Adam Gillespie. I'm going to be drawing something from uh, a play I put on with my school not too long ago. Uh, it's a Peter Pan and Wendy drawing. I'm only doing this because someone asked for it. And I figured it would be a great way for me to get my YouTube series a little bit more. Before I start, I would like to show you what the finished drawing is going to look like. I've already drawn this one. This one I just kind of did a light sketch of based off of that one. So, without um, further ado, let's get started, shall we? Now, I usually start with the head. It's, it helps me determine how big the rest of the body is going to be. I always start with the chin too, so I know the size of the head. It's one of those systems that people can come up with for themselves. Uh, it looks like a bunch of pillars and like a valley and stuff right now, but give it time and it'll look pretty cool. So, it's gonna be light for now. I'm just darkening it up a little bit so I can get a good base as to how I want it to turn out. Yeah, after that I usually go in a little tiny bit from the outside of the jaw. Just go straight in. I always draw the neck right after the head. So that I like know the size. Like I said, it's a system. Now, I usually go down the right side of the body first, but since this overlaps, I'm going to start with this. So yeah, it's um really actually kind of a simple drawing. I'll get deeper into detail when I zoom in on the stuff. So, as of right now, I'm just darkening. So, I want to get the basic look down for the guy before I start adding more stuff in. around this area I like to add wrinkles in early as well like I said just kind of plop them in there doesn't really matter this one can do that uh, so yeah right now I'm just darkening I'll go through more of like basics and everything in some other videos. But for this one, I want to focus mostly on details and how to do them and whatnot. The hand's not going to look perfect in this right now. So if you want to know how to draw the head, I usually start with an oval. 
but because I already drew it on another sheet of paper, this time I just kind of, you know, sketched it out. The shoulders, other arm places, just joints in general, you usually start with a ball joint like that. Now I have the fingers though, for the fingers you draw the circle in the hand and then you kind of draw the hand straight out like that. Another thing to keep in mind when you're about to do what I'm about to do is you want to remember, you want to kind of overlap this, the um, fabric so that it looks like it's actually going around. I'll get more into detail over there, so I'm going to save that for later. This will be where the shirt ends on this side. I'm sorry about that. So, um, I'm going to show you guys some more detailed views of this really soon. Just let me get the basic stuff in place. So, another thing about wrinkles is you, you don't want to keep constantly going in the same place. It's going to look very bland. You want to add a little bit more flavor every now and then. However, for some things, having one direction for it to go is actually the most perfect thing you can do. Like I said, I'm going to zoom in. Like I said, I'm going to zoom in later. As of right now, I'm just darkening it up so I can see it better. For the legs, if you want to start off with the legs, the easiest thing to do, like I said before, draw a ball joint at the knees, and actually with the hip, you want to have like a center line like that, and then this bit you want to go up and have a chest circle. Now this is based off of a real picture taken, so I didn't do that with this one. But, that is always a good thing to have in mind. So now I'm going to get into the Wendy side of things. <coughs> oh, for, I, also, I forgot to mention why I'm drawing this a second time. It's not for the YouTube series in particular, alone. Um, the lady who played Wendy in the play that I took part in actually asked if I could draw this picture for her because I brought it to a pool party and I showed it to everyone. And they all liked it. So, and now I'm just going to, I said give me some time, I want to post this on YouTube first. Um, so yeah, I said I'm just getting this down. A little bit darker so I can see it better. I don't want to name any names. I don't know if that's um, something that the person who asked me to draw this for them would want. So we'll just stick with calling her Wendy for now. Now here is the difficult part, especially for me, because I'm better at drawing male figures than I am at drawing female figures. So I kind of have to work between lines here. It was actually a really big blessing for me to not have to draw the um, female anatomy in this picture because of the fact that she's wearing a nightdress. Like I said, I'll fix the head later and everything. 
That is definitely not the size of the head that I want it to look like, so... I'm a little bit chunky right now. So, this goes here. I'll get into more basics eventually, so... Yeah. Draw the fist in over here. Yeah, I don't know why I had my hand in the shape of a fist when we took this picture. But I guess I just wasn't comfortable putting my hand around the, this girl that I, you know, barely know. So, yeah. I'm just gonna kind of lightly sketch it all in. It's not supposed to look amazing right now. So now that you got a better look at it, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. Starting with Peter Pan's face. Hold on, this thing's being tricky. Wait a second. Okay. There we go. Sorry for that. I'm still kind of new to this whole filming thing. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and So here's the hairdo. I'm going to darken it while I draw so that get a better look. The head's going to look kind of stout. It's because the camera is on an angle. So yeah, I don't have a professional camera or anything. It's actually a little bit more uh, elongated than that. I will try to get a different view of it by the end of the video. Yeah. So I don't need to do too much for the face, that is. Really, all you have to do is just. Make sure the eyes are the same size. Make sure the pupils are in the same place. That's the hardest part about the face. The eyes. And the rest of it's pretty much simple, average, ordinary stuff. Now I like to do is um, add blush. Like that. <laughs> Might not be able to see it all too well. But then, I did the other one. Just added a little bit of a cut there. Kind of like he was just fight, like in a fight or something. this little lip thing here to show you that it does have a face, you know, kind of simple looks and whatnot. 
Not too much. He does not have his hat. I'm not good at drawing hats right now. I'm getting better, but this is a different hat. So I'm going to try and keep away from that. So now we're going to move on down to the neck. Yeah, the neck, my face is really weird in the photo. Now, would you believe me? If I was the only person capable of playing Peter Pan in my entire school. It's because I am the best, most agile, young, and exactly the same character trait as Peter Pan in my entire school. A bunch of people tried it out. Like Steven did, you don't know him. Forgot that bit. Oops. There we go. That's better. That's back to normal. Not all the curves and everything, the clothing, all of that is real life. All of the folds, everything, the buttons, everything is exactly what it looked like in real life, which is actually the hard part. Because you're gonna feel like a dirt bag if you mess it up. Even though you may not be. I mean who knows you might be. Because of some sort of penning situation, but highly doubt it. So yeah. Oops. Didn't move the camera there. Um, I'm gonna take a few zoom, like a little zoom out. Now I'm going to do the torso of Peter Pan. So, yeah, I do. A lot of drawing. It's a, it's a big passion of mine. Uh, all the clothing folds. I was never really good at clothing folds until I started watching some videos on how to do that sort of thing. And let me tell you, that stuff really helped me out with clothing folds. You kind of want to make it like a quick dash. You don't want to give it like a refined. I took a lot of time on this look for the clothing fold. As you do that, it's going to look a little bit better. Yeah. That bit there. And around the end of the sleeves. Yeah, so there's the torso area. And I like to do is I kind of like to give it a little bit of shading. Kind of show which parts are going to be shaded in and which parts it won't be. Yeah, not too much though. So I'm going to shade when I draw, when I color it and whatnot after inking it. Yeah. So, unfortunately, though, the only thing that really wasn't Peter Panny about me. 
was the fact that I have too deep of a voice to play the part of a 12 year old boy. And I have too much muscle to play the part of a 12 year old boy. So we kind of had to thin it down by using a light brown shirt. Not light, dark brown. Dark brown shirt. Kind of compressed. And we only did that so that I would have a thinner looking body. I am still pretty thin. Nothing about that that's untrue. part that isn't true is that I'm a 12 year old in the play. And I'm a 16 year old in real life. At least I'm not 65. So, it will look a little bit more muscular once it gets inked and shaded and whatnot. And once I start showing you guys. Sorry for the interruption. Someone was at my door. So look, this is what I was talking about before. Let me just zoom in on the arm area here. Give some time. Maybe it's too much. There. This is what I was talking about before. For the fabric going around the arm. You want to imagine it's going behind it like that. You also want to erase all the stuff over here. So you can see what you're doing. Oh yeah. Then you kind of just continue it right there for that bit. This comes over here, and you do that. And you do this, and you do that. So it kind of looks like the fabric's going around the arm both ways. Now, this is the interesting part, this is the fun part of the drawing. When you get to draw the stuff that looks all messed up and whatnot. As you just get to run free with your imagination here. Yeah, you can draw some back there. Play that in. Yeah, I mean... Now my sleeves were not this torn up. In the... play. But they were still pretty cut up. I kind of... made my own look for that in this picture. Yeah, so, let's cut down to the legs, the lower area.
starting at the belt. We'll move our way down after this. And you see this line here? You want to start the belt over here because the other side is going to be that far off. So it's kind of almost in the middle. It's just barely a little bit off. And you kind of add a little bit of an egg shape to it when you go around. But it's not completely an egg shape. And why would I want to put it here? I want to put it here so that I can do that for the buckle. And then you put this here, bam. It's just the end of the buckle on this side. There you go. Now this part here, you're not going to be able to see what's there, but I did have a sword on me when I took this picture, so... Can I do that? That actually will get colored in different. So, you see the buckle ends here? Just imagine it kind of goes around like that. Pretty simple stuff. So then you move on to the tunic area. Which I like to add a little bit of curve. So it looks a little bit more like fabric. And then I kind of add that bit there. There you go. Uh, like I said, you don't have to follow this exactly. It's not a step-by-step, -step, it's just showing details, facial, design, wrinkling, how you should do it. Wrinkling is more like a spontaneous sort of a situation. You kind of just, it, it just happens. Like you just do it. It's just one of those moments, you know? Now for the shorts, since, you know, these are thicker shorts and everything, I didn't have too many wrinkles on them, so I'm kind of definitely artistically ad-libbing right here. And for the tears in the shorts, you just kind of go like an up and down triangular motion. You'll be able to see more of a refined look to it. Once I get into the rest, of the series for this one drawing, the inking and whatnot. <coughs> the coloring will actually probably be the most interesting part because I don't actually have the colors necessary to pull off a real life and real accurate um, color scheme for this thing. So, for the calves, I actually didn't realize until I looked at the picture that I definitely don't have kid calves. These are way too big to be a Peter Pan. But, since it's supposed to be based off of a real life picture, I just went with it. I didn't realize when I was drawing this as well, the first time that I have some extremely thin ankles. I want to add more of a curve there since it's facing t more towards you. Yeah. So the shoes are just pretty basic. Just like um, any other type of old-time Renaissance shoes. There's not much. There's not much to be done down at the bottom, like at the legs. Pretty just basic stuff. 
I'm going to end it there because, I don't know, it just kind of makes me feel like I'm actually drawing the real life picture. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start drawing. Wendy's face. Yeah. This one I actually have more trouble with because, once again, I'm better at drawing male features than I am at drawing female features. However, I'll just follow the lines, simplify them, and come up with a far better outlook. I don't want to make it too dark around the edges. That would ruin the fic that would ruin the picture. You also don't want to make it too bland on the way that the hair looks. So, now the face does look stouter, more stout than in reality what it looks like to me once again that's just because of the camera and angle and everything yeah. this is more of a manga look to it you know it's got more of a manga-esque type of a face and that's really because I spend more time drawing manga characters than I have real life type characters. Now the nose does look a little weird. I'll admit that. You don't want to add too much detail. The mouth is crooked. Just gotta straighten it back out. There we go. And then, once again, just because I'm more of a manga as type person, I add the blushies. Yeah, blushies. So, for uh, I also want to finish this real quick. Kind of on the same path. Like I said, I'm not an expert at drawing. I have really good tips. But I'm not the best. The hand does look small. But that's exactly what it looked like in the picture. It looks smaller on screen right now. It's only because it's a fist that it looks small. I forgot something. Peter Pan. Which kind of gives a... 
little triangular bits right there. Kind of gives him my back hair. You know, my back of the head hair. Then, uh... Go ahead and zoom out. Like that. Now we'll get into the rest of the body. So, the hair... And that hair was actually really curly in real life. So, that's what I'm trying to go for right now. More realistic look. I was wearing a nightdress, so there's not going to be much to draw here. And the wrinkles are actually pretty straightforward. They're just kind of droopy. They're, they're droopy wrinkles. It's only because there's nothing tucked in anywhere. There's nothing... blowing in the wind. The only wrinkle that I would find not in the way it would be in real life would be the one down by her left foot, which you'll get a little chance to look at. Like I said, this is actually the easiest part of the drawing. And it's all because these wrinkles are just so straightforward. You know, the only, that's that's one that I would also kind of beg to differ on. You know, it's kind of got that weird wrinkle down there. It's it's like a wrinkles are like cousin folds. I like the fold. They're like the Cousins to folds. Yeah. Really, I'm not. I'm not like. Uh, I'm not disgusted with the fact that they're kind of like cousins to folds. I would just wish that wrinkles would be a little bit more important in drawing for some people. Because you see all these new stupid cartoons like Uncle Grandpa or... Um, I'm not gonna say Johnny Test was stupid, but if you watch those... shows... like Johnny Bravo... Samurai Jack... They're not... a lot of them aren't stupid, but... the artwork can kind of look super simplified, which is something that I don't think any artist wants in his drawing, because that takes away from the coolness of it. And if you're taking away from the coolness of something, people are going to really start to hate the way that it feels, the way that it looks, everything. So, yeah. I, if people would take a little bit more consideration towards wrinkles, there would be a lot better artwork on TV shows. I mean, a lot of TV shows that I've seen, they've all had, you know, really great artwork. Uh, but the wrinkles in the clothing are absent. You kind of take away from the coolness of it. And I always like the way the clothing kind of folds in the artwork. Especially when it's like a, a Jedi or something. It just kind of adds a little bit of coolness to the way that it looks. Now if you're doing something skin tight, only add a few wrinkles, but still add wrinkles nonetheless. Wrinkles are very important to the realism of a drawing. And would you believe me if I told you that this girl here, Wendy, was actually older than I was in the play? Her size and whatnot does not look like it.
nor does her face. But she is definitely older than me. This is to all the people who, you know, don't know me on a personal standard. So let me go ahead and uh, zoom out. All the way. Hold on. Back it back in. Bam. So, before I do anything else, I'm going to label this. There's that over there. Peter Pan Wendy Neverland 2016. And then I'm going to put my signature down at the bottom. Oh. Somewhere near the bottom. That's sort of like this. There it is. Let me just zoom in. Adam Gillespie, that's my name. Now I'm gonna show you what the faces look like. A little bit weird, but not too bad. All that, not all that bad, if I do say so myself. I got to draw the eyes in here. And they're looking at the same thing. It doesn't look too like there. But there. So there you go. That is how to draw Peter Pan and Wendy from Neverland 2016.